Hello, students. Welcome again to our virtual lesson. Today's topic is on the autotrophic protists, the plant-like protists, or the algae. Uh, as you can see from the pictures shown here, we're looking at some organisms that are green or plant-like in nature, absorbing sunlight, making their own food, and definitely found in aquatic, watery environments. And so, uh, basic characteristics of the algae, um, they were at one time considered plants. They were in the plant kingdom. Like plants, they make their own food through photosynthesis, but um, they are no longer considered plants for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, most of the algae, at least at some point in their life, are motile. They have the ability to swim, and swimming is definitely not anything that a plant would do. All self-respecting plants are sessile and do not move around from place to place. Also, uh, algae do not have true roots, stems, and leaves. The plant parts that we mostly associate with the plants are lacking in the algae. So because of those differences, they are no longer considered plants or kicked out of the plant kingdom. Um, many different body shapes and forms and many, many different varieties of the algae, which we'll talk about a little more in detail. So how do we classify these algae? Uh, basically, they're classified as either unicellular or multicellular. The unicellular algae, of course, would be microscopic. And what's true of all the unicellular algae is they're all going to be the motile uh, algae. They're going to swim around from place to place. Multicellular algae, while they may have a motile stage, are mostly sessile. They're much more plant-like. Um, but that's one way to categorize them as either unicellular or multicellular. And then they can be further classified by the, the type of pigments they have. And there's three basic colors that algae come in. There's green algae, brown algae, and red algae. And while they all have the ability to do photosynthesis, they have the same pigments um, that green plants do to do photosynthesis. Some have some additional pigments that give them either a brown or a red color. And we use those colors and the uh, uni or multicellular nature of them to classify these algae. There's six different phylums. We'll go through each one uh, real briefly here. So the first phylum, chlorophyta, the prefix chloro means green. And so these are the multicellular green algae, better known as pond scum. If you've seen a pond or a lake um, that has this floating crud on the top that's kind of a greenish color, this is what we're talking about. It's not the rooted plants like lily pads or things like that. Those are actual plants in the plant kingdom. But we're talking about this scummy, slimy pond scum on the top <clears throat> would be members of the phylum chlorophyta. Um, they're multicellular, but they're generally fairly small as individual organisms, but they grow together in these big clumps in what's called an algae bloom. Uh, algae blooms usually caused by uh, humans putting fertilizer in or animal waste getting spilled into waterways are going to cause massive growth of this algae. Uh, when these die off, they can kill fish and harm the ecosystems of ponds and lakes because they are robbing oxygen from the water. Fish and aquatic insects and other things that live there, uh, it's not a very nice situation for them. So small ponds and lakes and things, algae blooms can be a big problem. It can really hinder the life that's, uh, that's living there. All right, so that's the phylum chlorophyta. Next is a theophyta. Theophyta is brown algae, and it's better known as the giant kelps. And in this picture, you can see just how big some of these kelps get. They're enormous. These are just some leaflets off of one of the giant kelps, and they can grow over 100 meters in length. They're found mostly in cool saltwater environments, and we aren't going to find them here in Wisconsin. You're not going to see them around uh, our lakes and rivers and things. Um, they're useful. The brown algae can be grown and commercially harvested. There's actually algae farms where people will grow these and, and then go in and harvest them. What they're useful for, uh, number one, is for their iodine content. Um, they can extract iodine that's useful in things like surgery and medicine and also useful in um, dietary supplements because we need some iodine in our diets. Uh, they can be used as thickener um, for ice cream and pudding. Two ingredients, if you check a, a food label of an ice cream package or uh, ice cream sandwich or something, you might see the ingredient carogenin, which is a common name for this algae thickener, or sometimes the term algin is used. Both of these are products that come from these brown algae and it makes ice cream thicker. Um, it's also eaten by many people around the world. These are edible and are included in um, lots of different types of, of cuisine, uh, particularly Asian cuisine. Traditional Asian stir fry would include some of these brown algae. Our third category here, the phylum rhodophyta. Rhodo means red and so these uh, are red in color by nature. They grow in the deep uh, ocean environments. They grow at very deep depths, up to uh, maybe 600 feet deep. 
um, where it's almost completely dark down. Their red color helps them absorb the remaining light that makes it down that deep, and they can live there. They're much smaller than the giant kelps. They're much more delicate um, and live in kind of their own little tiny niche down in the deep oceans, but they have very useful products um, that we extract from them. One in particular is the product auger, which we've used in class before, uh, is this culture medium for these petri dishes. They make a nice uh, gel um, for growing bacteria. And also there's another gel we've used, agarose. It's used in that gel electrophoresis process we talked about earlier in the year. Both of these are, are very valuable commodities um, that it makes it worth harvesting and extracting from red algae. Um, they're pretty expensive to buy because they do grow so deep and it does take quite a bit of the red algae just to make these products. Uh, you may have seen some red algae. They are um, used in making traditional Japanese sushi rolls and the sushi wraps. There's a particular kind of algae called nori, which is often used to wrap around these sushi rolls. So uh, again, the red algae, multicellular red algae are pretty valuable that way as well. Now let's talk about the unicellular algae. So those first three groups we talked about were multicellular. The unicellular algae, um, again, are usually motile. They're one-celled. Um, they can swim from place to place. The first group, euglenophyta, these are green in color. We've already looked at the euglena under the microscope that were green and were swimming around. They had a flagellum. They've got a little red eye spot that they use to see the sunlight and can swim over um, to areas where it's sunny. And so many of these the algae have actually senses that they can use to move themselves to where it's much brighter light. These are free living organisms uh, for the most part are pretty harmless because their numbers are not big and you won't find them really affecting ecosystems one way or the other. So that's the phylum euglenophyta. Another single celled algae uh, are the chrysophyta organisms. These are unicellular and brown in color. Commonly, these are referred to as diatoms. Uh, diatoms come in a number of different shapes, and in particular, you can see by the pictures, they have very intricate, kind of delicate shapes. And the reason for that is their cell walls are made out of glass. Um, these organisms are found in every ocean, pond, river, stream, lake, all around the world. They're one of the most common organisms in all the planet Earth. And they, because their numbers are so great, they're responsible for the majority of our oxygen that we breathe. Also, what's unique about these diatoms is they produce little droplets of oil that stay inside of their bodies. And when they die, they fall to the bottom of the ocean. And this oil can collect in large reservoirs, and they are responsible for making a lot of our fossil fuels, things like natural gas, gasoline, oil. A lot of that comes from dead um, deposits of diatoms. Um, their cell walls are also useful. If we harvest these, we can use these in a number of things, including things like toothpaste and polish. Uh, they can be used to make fine glassware, um, useful in pesticides and other, other common uh, commercial industrial things we can make out of these. So these are very useful um, algae. And again, they're found in every ocean, lake, stream, or river, the diatoms. Um, our final group here of the unicellular algae are phylum pyrophyta. Pyro means fire, and that's uh, kind of a fitting name for this group because they do kind of have some fiery aspects to them. We'll talk about them. Uh, first of all, they do have kind of a reddish color, and when they grow in abundance and we get an algae bloom of this type, they cause what's a phenomenon known as the red tides. Luckily for us, these are only mostly found in the oceans. We don't have these things showing up in our lakes and rivers and streams here in Wisconsin, but uh, red tides are nasty because they kill fish. They are smelly, and often beach, beaches are closed because they are harmful to people. Uh, these algae produce a slight toxin, which mostly is irritating to the human skin, but in, in big enough numbers, or if you consume enough of these, they could actually cause some sickness or possibly even death. Um, so because of that skin irritation, because they are slightly toxic, they keep people out of the water when these are present. But the cool thing about it is when they are present in large numbers, they glow, they light up. When you disturb them, when you stir the water, shake the water, these will actually give off bioluminescence, a nice glowing light. And I've got a short video here that shows some algae doing just this. So obviously this is a place where um, there was a red tide going on. This is probably along a beach, along an ocean, and all this red algae had washed up on the shore, and this is just a guy walking through, and you can see glowing footsteps as he disturbs these algae. They give off these uh, kind of a bluish glowing light. Really, really cool. If you've seen the movie Avatar, you've seen things very much like that. So um, that's our... 
That is our um, uh, phylum pyrophyte of the dinoflagellates are their common name. And they are all too common in some places and kind of a nuisance, but can't, can't uh, help but admit they are pretty kind of, kind of cool. So uh, that ends our lesson on the algae. Um, there will be a, a mastery quiz for you to take if you so desire, and we'll see you all in class tomorrow.